Um, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I am Dwayne Brzezak. If you don't know me, I am the Executive Director at NASW Michigan. Uh, I'm very excited to have with us today uh, Aliyah Wesela from the University of Michigan School of Social Work Continuing Education Department and Robin Simpson, the manager of the Michigan Continuing Education Collaborative, joining today to really uh, do our first of a kind town hall here in the state of Michigan to talk about continuing education and licensure rules in Michigan. Uh, we at the chapter level get questions all the time from social workers about continuing education requirements, licensure requirements. Um, we know things change all the time in these spaces. So we wanted to provide a space where we can give kind of current laws and rules around both of these important things for us as a field, and then have some opportunities for you all to get questions answered. We will have some opportunity at the end. We do um, ask that you put your questions into the chat and we'll answer those at the very end. We've got a kind of a, a pretty full program today because we have a lot of content to cover. So we hope we'll get some of your questions answered throughout, but we want to make sure that um, if you have specific questions as it relates to continuing education, as it relates to the licensure process or your specific licensure, uh, we hope mm -hmm. we will get those answered today. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Aaliyah to get us rolling. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Aaliyah Wessela. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Director of Continuing Education at the University of Michigan School of Social Work. Um, in my role, I am a CE provider. My office is a provider of CE. And likewise, like Dwayne mentioned, we get a lot of questions as well. And we have a lot of questions mm -hmm. also. Um, so I want to welcome, welcome you all and thank you for participating in our conversation today. Um, this is hopefully going to be the first of many opportunities you will have to learn more about what you need to know about continuing education as a social worker in the state of Michigan. So. If this is useful to you, please do plan to come back <laughs> for our, our follow-up sessions and there'll be more information about that provided near the end of today's presentation. All right, so I wanna start out with this. I get a lot of calls, as I mentioned, about the various continuing education rules, how our programs meet those or do not. Um, and I, anybody who's called me or talked to me on the phone has usually heard me validate that, yes, this is confusing stuff. Everything is changing all the time. It's even difficult for CE providers in the state like myself to keep up with how the rule changes are happening and what exactly they mean, how to interpret them, et cetera. Um, so we're hoping that today we're gonna have a lot of opportunity to answer your questions. Um, we do ask you to kind of hold, hold your questions till the end. We're hopefully gonna have some time for that. We do have a lot of information we wanna cover and we suspect that we will uh, probably address some of your questions as we go. So uh, keep your question in mind and we'll have some time for that at the end. Um, also a note that we are only spending an hour together today. Um, so there are probably many more questions you can think of than ones we'll get to. Um, there's, we may not have um, enough time to adequately address all the individual scenarios that you might be thinking of or have in mind. Um, so we ask for your patience with that and we will do our best to try to get through as many questions as possible. And the NASW Michigan uh, group is a great resource for getting these questions addressed. So please do, uh, do not hesitate to contact them if you have some more specific questions you need assistance with. All right, it looks like we have a poll that we're gonna launch asking, what is your current licensure level? We're just trying to figure out who's in the room today. So please go ahead and participate in that poll. Robin, you're muted. I'm sorry, let me know when you want me to end the poll. Right now, the majority of the viewers are LMSW, clinical and or macro. Great. Probably wonder about 80% of folks have uh, completed the poll. We go ahead and close it. You want me to close that? Sure. Okay. Let me go ahead and share the results. Is that showing anywhere? Yep, the attendees can see, but could you please read it out for the group? 
Okay. Um, social service technicians, we had 1%. Limited license bachelor is at 5%. Fully licensed bachelor is at 3%. Limited license master's is at 28%, and the fully licensed master social worker is at 63%. Great, thank you. All right, so we're gonna be covering information today that pertains to both licensure and continuing education. So those folks who are LLMSWs are in a good space <laughs> um, to learn about what they're gonna need to know next with continuing ed. And then those of us who are fully licensed certainly need uh, to know what's going on as well. So uh, before we get any further, uh, we thought it would be good to kind of go through who the major players are related to social work licensure and continuing education. So. Um, there's a lot of acronyms that get thrown around. One thing that we've certainly found is that folks aren't necessarily sure who they're supposed to be contacting for various things. Um, and this is admittedly confusing. There's a lot of groups here. Um, so the LARA, Licensing and Regulatory Affairs in Michigan, is the group that uh, you would be applying to for licensure. They address any regulatory changes. Uh, supervision forms and ethics complaints go through Lara as well. I bet Robin has a lot more information on everything Lara does, and I would invite uh, Robin to chime in. <laughs> well, I, I just want to point out to everyone that contrary to some popular beliefs, Lara is who issues your license. They are the group that um, owns your license and any changes have to go through LARA before they get passed on to social workers. NASW is not the group that issued the license or it's ASWB, Association of Social Work Boards. I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Thank you. That was the piece I was hoping you were going to bring to this. Um, so any concerns about your license, those are addressed with LARA. Um, the Michigan Board of Social Work is a separate group, and as it states on the slide, uh, the, the goal of the Board of Social Work is to promote and protect the public's health, safety, and welfare. Um, so they're, they exist to make sure that social workers are practicing in such a way that protects the public. Um, they also create rules and review rules to, to meet that goal. Um, the Council on Social Work Education is also listed here. This is the accrediting body for schools of social work. So if you're going to be um, initially getting licensed, you want to make sure that you are um, attending a school of social work that is accredited by the Council on Social Work Education or CSWE. The Association of Social Work Boards is an organization that I am personally a little bit more familiar with. Um, in addition to being the entity that develops the social work exam um, and any sort of information that you need around that, they're also a group that organizes boards of social work across the country. So they're kind of the meeting group where like our Michigan Board of Social Work convenes with other boards of social work um, in this organization called ASWB. Um, I also work with them in a capacity where they, um, they have an approved continuing education program. So they um, are one of the organizations um, whose CE approval is accepted in the state of Michigan when you're um, doing your, your CE for your license renewal. Um, so any CE that's approved by ASWB is accepted in Michigan in addition to some others. And we're gonna get to that later in the conversation. NASW Michigan, uh, you're all here. You're a little bit familiar with all the wonderful resources that NASW provides. Um, and in addition, they, they answer a lot of questions about licensure and continuing education. So please do consider them a resource um, for all these things like this conversation and then your questions as well. So, and then the Continuing Education Collaborative. And this is a group that I've been a member of since 2015. Um, I think folks in the state might be a little bit- six, six, one, three, eight. Um, uncertain about what this group is and what it does, but we're a group of CE providers that get together and talk about continuing education in the state of Michigan. Uh, this is a great place for CE providers like myself to 
come and bounce ideas around with other CE providers, make sure we're understanding rules that we're supposed to be, um, you know, knowledgeable about, um, and we, we share information with each other as well there. So the con one thing that I don't know that folks know is that the collaborative actually has a website that pulls together and aggregates um, the different uh, CE options that are available in the state of Michigan. And that there's a link to that in the chat. You'll find it. If you haven't visited this website before, it's a great resource to find CE in Michigan. So please do check that out. And I'm going to pass the mic over to Dwayne now. Thanks, Aaliyah. Yeah, so we at NASW Michigan, we get questions a lot about these different entities and who is the right person that I should be contacting for what thing. Um, the only other thing I wanted to add around the Michigan Board of Social Work is these their meetings are public and we highly recommend that all social workers attend at least one, if not regular board of social work meetings. This is where your rules are made. These are the folks who, if you get a complaint filed against your license where disciplinary action happens, uh, their meetings right now are in person. They're in Lansing at the Ottawa building um, every other month. And we'll make sure that that, that, that meeting information is, is shared below. Um, but we highly recommend that all social workers attend at least one of those meetings so you're aware of what that process looks like, that you can be involved when change happens. Um, and ultimately, three of those positions open every year. Usually, there, there are nine members of the Board of Social Work. Six of them are social workers. Three of them are public. Um, NASW works to get social workers appointed to those boards every year. Uh, but we want to make sure that there is a good representative body of social workers on that board, both geographic wise, racially, practice area, license type. Um, and so there's always a couple of those positions that open every year. And so we, again, I just want to uh, uh, reinforce that those meetings are open to you to attend. And it really is an important way for folks to see what the process is for our, our, our field here in Michigan. Um, we will make sure that the slide and all the, the links are sent out to everybody who's registered for today as well. So I see a couple of comments about that into the chat box. So going into licensure just briefly, today's session isn't meant to be a how to get licensed webinar. That's a whole different thing that we'll drop it, some resources into the chat, but we did wanna provide some of the basic information about our license here in Michigan. You know, ultimately why we have a license to begin with is to protect the clients, uh, our clients and the citizens of Michigan. It gives them the ability to make sure that they're being seen by qualified and competent practitioners that have not only a degree in social work, but have uh, years of experience under supervision and have passed a standardized test. Uh, Michigan was one of the second to last states to get licensed out of the whole, whole United States. And we did not get licensure until 2005. Uh, we had, you know, it's funny, I was going through some of the old NASW Michigan uh, newsletters and even going into the 80s, we had begun advocacy around licensure and it had took decades of advocacy to get it passed in the state level. Um, and so what it did in 2005, it gave us three things. It gave us the license, which is that physical document that allows you to practice as a social worker. It gave us the scope of practice, which is a kind of that defined area of what we can do with our degrees. And it gave us title protection. So it means in order to call yourself or work as a social worker in the state of Michigan, you not only have to have that degree in social work, but you also have to have a license. So unlicensed folks, have BSW and MSW degrees, but you're not able to call yourself a social worker. Before 2005, many of you who've been in the field for a while know that anybody could call themselves or work as a social worker in the state of Michigan, even without a social work degree. So it was really important for us to get that piece added in there. And not all states have title protection at this point. So we're really happy that when we did get this licensure uh, law passed, that that was a, a critical component for us. Now, one of the new things that you probably all have been hearing about is this new MyPlus system. So this is the online system through the state of Michigan where everything for your license now lives. If you have not already, you will have to create an account through the MyPlus system. We recommend that you please watch the videos that Laura has put together around how to set up an account for yourself. This is where you, if you're a new licensee, you will have to create an account apply for your uh, license, send in your transcripts, all that will be done through your particular account. 
If you're already licensed, this is where you will renew your license. If you need to change your address, all of that stuff will be done now through this MyPlus system. Um, I'm gonna drop the link to the MyPlus account uh, into the, the chat box now so everybody has that. And that's also where you can find the, there's two short videos about how to set up account. And we have been hearing from folks that they're having issues setting up account. Most of that can be answered if you make sure to watch the, the recordings and the, read through the instructions that, the, the, that have sent out. If you just try to do it on your own, it is a little bit of a complicated system. And we know that they are working on uh, some bugs. Social work is one of the last professions in Michigan to be moved over to MyPlus. So they were waiting for us because we are one of the largest health licensees in the state. Um, and so for my conversations with Laura and the state, social workers have overall had less problems than any other field in terms of getting their accounts set up. But we know that problems do exist. If you need help with that, we definitely recommend emailing or calling Laura as they, that usually can, they can help you over the phone. Um, but this is also where you can, you'll, you can see when your license is up for renewal. If you need to file a complaint against another licensed professional, you could do this through the MyPlus system. And if you want to verify somebody's license, this can also be done through the MyPlus account. In terms of our process in Michigan, um, just very briefly, the process to go from unlicensed to licensed is first step is graduating from an accredited CSWE school. And then you will go and create your MyPlus account. You will submit an application for the license type that you're applying for, either the limited license at the bachelor's or the master's clinical or macro level. At that point, you will be able to get your fingerprints submitted and have your transcript sent from your school of social work. Once those pieces are complete, you'll be issued your limited license and can start collecting hours. Um, if you're somebody who's already applied for your limited license and you're just kind of waiting on the final pieces to uh, come in, what I recommend is checking your MyPlus account every day. Because what you'll see is you will be issued your license before you get it in the mail, usually by several weeks. As soon as you see that it's been issued by the state, that's when you can start putting those letters on your credentials, on your signature line, on your resume. Um, so as soon as that has been approved by the state of Michigan, go ahead and change that everywhere that uh, you, you need to. Once you get your license approved, that's when you can start collecting hours. Uh, in Michigan, you have to get 4,000 hours of supervised work experience. So supervision has to be completed by a fully licensed master social worker. If you're going for your master's level license, your supervisor has to have the designation that you're going for, whether that's clinical or macro. At the bachelor's level, uh, you just have to have a master's level supervisor at that point. Um, work has to be completed. Um, it'll take a minimum of two years to complete that 4,000 hours. And it can be a combination of volunteer or paid work, as long as it is social work work. Um, and one of the questions we get pretty regularly around this is, what counts as work? Is it just direct time with clients? No, it's anything that's related to your job. It's paperwork, it's staff meetings, it's you going to conferences, it's you going to advocacy events. Anything that's tied to your direct job can count towards your, your licensure hours, um, as long as you, again, are under supervision by an LMSW at that point. And you definitely wanna make sure that your supervisor is signing off on some sort of regular log. You know, We suggest at least monthly that you have documentation of that, as well as a contract that's written up between you and your supervisor or supervisee. And this is not something that you'll end up having to turn in to the state, but it is something that can serve as a backup if something happens. You know, People move, they get fired, they get bad, they have no communication with their agencies anymore, people pass away. So all of this additional documentation, it's really a safeguard for the limited licensee um, if something had to happen um, and they needed that backup from the state. Once work hours and supervision is complete, then folks are eligible to sit for the exam. This is a newer change as of last year before you could take your exam the second you got your limited license. As of last June, that has changed. So now you have to have all of your hours complete before you can sit for your exam. 
So once you're out, your 4,000 hours are done, you've submitted the verification forms for your supervision to Laura. What will happen is they will make you eligible to sit for the exam and you'll register for that. You'll pick your time and location um, and then you'll just hopefully complete that, that piece of the process. Um, once your exam is complete, those results will get sent right to the state for you. And then you will just have to fill out an application for full licensure and your verification form as it says here, has to be sent in as well. Um, and at that point, you will have a full license. Now, uh, we'll talk about some of the requirements in terms of continuing education and training in just a bit um, as well. But um, the, the other question we do get pretty regularly is, how should I list my credentialing? And there definitely is a hodgepodge of ways people do this in the state, but there is a correct way. So we wanna make sure you all at least know the correct way, because I'm guessing some of you probably don't have it listed right now. So in Michigan, at the master's level, this is where we find it the most, you should have your designation listed after your name. So it should be LLMSW Clinical, LLMSW Macro, or LMSW Clinical Macro, or LMSW Clinical and Macro. Those are Michigan's specific ways that we list our credentials out per our, our general rules and LARA. Some states have slightly different letters like LCSW. Michigan does not have an LCSW. So if that's the way you list your credential, that's technically incorrect. Um, no, there's no 50 state um, acronyms. Unfortunately, every state has different rules about their licensure process and different levels of licensure. So this is what in Michigan is our specific ways that we should be listing your credential. You do not need to list MSW or BSW in addition. A lot of folks did that pre-licensure because um, folks could be registered as social workers before 2005, but they did not have to have a degree in social work to have that. So many folks pre-2005 would have MSW and then registered social worker, um, and then that kind of carried over into the initial steps. But it is redundant at this point since everyone has to have a MSW or BSW degree. So you do not need to list that. That's a great question, Stacy. Thanks for asking that in the chat. Um, you know, it's not harmful to add that in there, but it's not necessary at this point. Um, and most insurances, if you have the LMSW with the clinical designation, that's gonna cover you there. All right. And obviously you may have additional credentialing like the ACSW, you may have school social work, the CAADC, and then those, you'll just have alphabet soup at the end of your name. And you know we are in this point now where there's folks who are having multiple licenses in multiple states. So you may have what looks very redundant like LMSW hyphen clinical, comma LCSW, because that's maybe what's in a different state. Or if you're also licensed in Ohio, you can have the LISW. Um, so there could be a lot of different options that are, are ending up after your name. Um, and since you asked another question about this, do you have to list the words clinical or macro? Yes, you should. Because if you just list LMSW, that actually does not tell anyone what your scope of practice is because Michigan does not have just an LMSW. I would assume that if you list that, you have both the clinical and the macro designation. But part of what our license does is it is intended to protect our communities and our clients. And by having that designation listed, it tells a client what you are legally able to do in the, the state of Michigan. And in theory, if there was a complaint filed against you, how you would be outside of your scope. Great, good question though. All right. Um, all right, I think this is now back to Aaliyah as we talk into some CE requirements and we definitely will get some uh, through some of the other questions as we get through the end of today. All right, lots of good questions coming in in the chat, I see. Um, so this is the part where we're gonna kind of spend some time spelling out what you need for CE. Um, so I'm going to start with some basic stuff and then I'm going to pass the baton over to Robin, who knows more about the nitty gritty specifics of some of these requirements. <laughs> so hold tight. If I don't get to your question just yet, we are going to spend quite a bit of time hashing this out with you today. <laughs> um, so starting simple, social workers in the state of Michigan renew every three years. 
Um, this was news to me, the second point here, your first license may not be a complete cycle. So when you first get licensed, you may be like, do I need to start my CE yet? Um, I believe it is correct that you will need to count CE for the three years prior to your license renewal date, right? Well, I'm sorry, Aliyah, if I might okay. add, uh, three every three years is what we refer to as a cycle. So that first renewal will probably not be a three year period. So during that time, you do not have to get CEs. Once you renew the next time and you're put into a three year cycle, then you will have to get your CE hours. I would like to point out that I hear a lot of rumors about uh, things people are hearing about the requirements or how many hours they have to get. Um, forget all of that. Let's, let's just start looking at it the way we have it here so that we can avoid any further confusion. And anyone that tells you something different, have them contact me and I will make sure that they understand what is required. Thanks. And, and, yeah. and just on that as well. So why it was a little bit weird for a long time. So until this year when the My Plus system got activated, all social workers were on an April 30th renewal deadline. And so if you got your full license, say December 30th or December 31st, you would have sometimes this weird four month license, which would get you synced up to that April 30th deadline. So that's what we're talking about where your first license may not be a complete cycle. You may have a partial month for that first time only. However, now that we're in the My Plus system, your renewal is not based off of April 30th anymore everyone's renewal is going to be based off of the month that you actually get your limited license. So you may have started to see, even for you fully licensed folks, that, oh, I have a weird like four-year four renewal for this next cycle or like three and a half year. That's what's happening is they're now resyncing you to your original application date. So it's a, we're in this weird piece now where I... I think long-term, this is going to be the best way to go. Like you should just be able to renew when you get your license and not have these weird gap periods. But now that we've got this new system started, it's resyncing people up to their original start date. So if you notice that as you're renewing this year or potentially next year that you have a little bit of more time than three years, that's what that, that piece is. And so you would have um, your the ability to get CEs potentially for like, three and a half years instead of three years, you're 45 hours. So just note that that change is happening right now. And so we won't see the second bullet where, well, we, uh, the, that, that complete cycle um, for your, your first year won't happen going forward because of the MyPlus system. Yeah, so the, the moral to this story is pay attention to the renewal date that comes on your license in the mail. Yes because most likely it has changed. Yeah. So it was always April 30th, maybe June 30th now. So just make sure you look at that and hang on to that license because they do charge you for duplicates. All right, thank you for that additional information. So we have just demonstrated why NASW Michigan is an excellent resource to check in with if you have questions about these things. And I just demonstrated that sometimes I don't know the specifics of what's going on either, which may not give you confidence in me, but I do know who to ask and I encourage you all to do the same. Um, there is a lot of change going on right now in the CE requirement world and we're all doing our best to try to keep up with it. So thank you all for being here to do the best you can to stay on top of things with us too. All right, so just a, a clarification about language before we go on. Um, social workers in Michigan earn CE clock hours. Um, the term CEU is not being used anymore really in Michigan. Um, it is used sometimes elsewhere and it sometimes means something different than a clock hour. So clock hour is 
very intuitive. It is what you think it is. Uh, one hour of time is one CE clock hour. Um, so there's there's no need to overcomplicate it, but please know that if you're uh, talking about a CEU, that may in fact be something different than a CE clock hour. And CEU is not being used in Michigan uh, to talk about what is earned by completing continuing education. Robin, did you come on to add to that? Uh, no, but I, I can. Um, a lot of uh, CE providers sometimes only get approval for uh, CEUs for nurses and doctors and tell social workers that they can earn those for their license renewal. That is incorrect. Social work CE hours have to be relevant to social work practice. Thank you. All right, I'm sure we've uh, prompted some more questions in your mind. So I'm gonna, let's move on to the next slide and we can try to cover some more of the basics and uh, we're gonna work our way towards the more specific as we go. All right, so of these 45 hours that you have to get every three years, five of them have to be designated as ethics hours. Um, most states I will say in the country have some sort of ethics requirement for hours. So if you're taking a training that's out of state and is approved by someone, there, ethics is usually something that you'll see that you can get elsewhere. Pain management hours are specific to Michigan. There may be other states that have something similar, um, but it's good to note that you may not find pain management hours if you're looking outside the state of Michigan for a CE. Um, and then recently we have this new two hours of human trafficking that is required. Um, there's been a little bit of shuffling around this human trafficking requirement, and we're going to get into the specifics of that soon. Um, but just know that of your 45 hours going forward for your renewal, you'll need five ethics, two pain management, and two human trafficking hours. And the other just thing to note about these requirements, when you are seeing courses offered, if the word ethics or pain management or pain and symptom management is in the title or the job description or the event description, that is usually your indicator that that will count for it. Even if it doesn't say one CE in ethics, if it's in the title or the description, it will count for that specific type of credit. Human trafficking, that one's a little bit more tricky because we have content pieces that are required by the state of Michigan. There's not that for ethics or pain management that there's specific things that have to be included for that content. Human trafficking, it does. So most organizations who are doing that human trafficking training are being very explicit to say, this content will be covered for your Michigan licensure requirement, right? Yes. And we, I see questions about implicit bias. It's not continuing education. So we'll get to that in a second as well. Yes, you're all anticipating us and you know what's up. So this is good. All right. So in addition, some more of these nuts and bolts things about your CE requirements. So half of your continuing education hours for your renewal may be taken in a non-live, non-synchronous format. So that includes self-study, any sort of on-demand course where you're watching a recording of something or any other format that you can think of that is not live. 22 and a half of your hours will need to be live. So they either need to be in-person events or they need to be live synchronous events, such as the one that we are having right now, where we can all talk to each other in real time. Um, yeah, I just covered both of those there. <laughs> so yeah, in person, half of them need to be either in person or live online and synchronous where you can be talking to the instructors in real time. And that's a really good, I just want to reiterate, you can earn 100% of your continuing education online as long as it is live online. And that's been almost all of the content that's been put out since the pandemic started. So, and that's been pre-COVID, that's not a new rule. That's been around since at least 2017. All of your continuing education can be earned online through either live or a combination of live plus pre-recorded. Um, so just wanted to reiterate that, we get that question quite a lot from folks. 
Yes. Um, if, if we could quickly go back to CE requirement slide before this one. Um, a lot of times I get questions, can you earn more than five hours in ethics? Yes, you can take as many ethics trainings as, as you want. Same goes for pain, same goes for human trafficking. Um, we like you to try to er get a diverse uh, portfolio of learning, but your job focuses on ethics day in and day out. By all means, you can get all your hours that way. Thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so there's, okay, so there's, now we're kind of getting into that piece about whether there's additional training requirements, which are maybe not continuing education specifically. Um, so this is, right, this slide, sorry, I didn't put together <laughs> a slide presentation. This is intended to address the human trafficking piece and the um, implicit bias. Uh, yeah. Yes, okay. I wanna make sure I'm on the same page with everyone. I, yeah, I think that that last one was, that one is for implicit bias. Yeah. So now, okay, so just to distinguish, so sorry, Robin, um, okay. to distinguish between the CE requirements and then additional training for licensure, anything that's in this additional training bucket does not need to be approved for continuing education, but you would still need to meet the requirements. So implicit bias is one of the things that is currently falling into this bucket. And the human trafficking requirement was in this bucket and now it's moved over, it's graduated almost to become an actual CE hour. Um, so there's been a change around human trafficking. Human trafficking has jumped from being a training requirement for social workers to now being a CE hour. And I do wanna note that this is a difference for social work um, that other professions don't necessarily share. So any profession that, um, has to follow the public health code, has some of these additional training requirements. So you will see listed and available, there are interprofessional trainings on human trafficking. There are probably currently a bunch of interprofessional trainings popping up in the implicit bias domain as well. Um, what was I saying about this? Where was I going? About interprofessional trainings and-, and Oh, yes, yes. Not so, required by all professions. Right, so there are some human trafficking trainings out there that met the social work requirements before uh, human trafficking became a CE hour requirement, if that makes sense. So um, U of M, for example, has a human trafficking training that's put out through our School of Public Health that many folks have taken. Um, and when it was you know, necessary to take human trafficking training where you check the box, that training would work for social work. But now that human trafficking is required to be CE hours, that training may not work anymore unless public health gets it approved for continuing education, if that makes sense. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this a bit more. I'm anticipating um, our future slides and I'm gonna pass it over to Robin because okay. she knows the ins and outs of all of this stuff. So um, <clears throat> it states that human trafficking uh, requirements had to be completed by December 22nd, 2021. Um, and now that you're in a three-year cycle or renewal cycle, you have to have two CE hours in human trafficking. Um, and I'm sorry if that upsets anybody, but I am the person that pushed them to make this a requirement because one training for human trafficking over the, the length of your entire career is not sufficient to address and understand human trafficking. Um, it's a huge problem in the country today. So, um, oh, I just covered that. So the, the human trafficking re new requirements begin June 1st of this year. So. Um, anybody who renewed, renews this May will have to have their human trafficking, um, I'm sorry, I'm reading that wrong. Uh, all new applicants for licensure will need to have human trafficking 
complete when they applied for their license. That's that was the one time only. Um, and then once you're in your three year cycle, you have to have the two hours. Is that right, Dwayne? Yeah. So correct? if you if you are have not renewed, so this is new as of this year, the CE requirements being added right. in there. So your next renewal is when you're going to start to need those two CEs. Yes. So definitely. the current rules, if you're in a current cycle, is you have to have a human trafficking training complete. And this also then, the December 22nd deadline is for new applicants. So if you are a student who's going to be applying for their limited license starting last December, that's a question now that's on the application process. Have you completed a human trafficking training? So prior to December, for limited new applicants, there were no training requirements. So in December, human trafficking was added as something that all new applicants have to have prior to applying. And starting in June, implicit bias is also added. So many of the schools of social work are starting to add that into their curriculum or as additional uh, tools that students can attend before they finish their programs. Thank you. Hmm. Excuse me. Okay, another question um, that I get a lot of questions about is uh, people contact me about uh, getting copies of their, their CE certificates. They assume that we have, or the state of Michigan has, attendance records for every single training being offered in the state of Michigan. You are responsible for keeping your certificates. Um, you are required now to carry them for six years in case you get audited um, and make sure that on those certificates, when you receive it, make sure there's a date on there and that there's an approval statement on there. If those items are not on that, that certificate along with your name, contact the organization that offered that training and get a new certificate. Um, three years is a long time. And, and after that time passes, people are then pulling out their certificates and going, oh my gosh, I didn't have, there wasn't an approval on this. So, you know, look at it every time you get it before you file it away with your records. Um, you cannot carry your CEs over to another licensure cycle. When your cycle ends on the 30th of the month, that month, you have to start over. You can't carry anything over. So if you, let's say you attend something this year at the end of April, it carries on through two days in May, that CE provider is going to have to give you two certificates, one with the April dates and one with the May dates, because they will not, if they audit you, they being Lara, if they audit you, they will not accept that certificate. So every time somebody renews their license, and, and by the way, there's about 28,000 social workers in the state of Michigan. I know sometimes our focus is, is somewhat narrow, but it's a huge field, and there are a lot of social workers in the state. Um, so if you, uh, if you attend a training, you cannot attend that training a second time in the same cycle. The only way that can happen is if the organization issuing the certificate has put a different title of that training on the certificate. For example, like human trafficking part one, human trafficking part two. It, there has to be a designation the state won't count it. So what the state does is when people renew their license, they randomly go in and select people who renewed their license to do an audit. Because you went online and you said you had all your hours, you had your ethics, 
and your human trafficking and your pain. Then they're going to pull a report and they're going to they're going to send you a letter and say, you know what, we have audited uh, your we're auditing your license renewal. Please send me the copies of your CE certificates as proof of your attendance. Um, if you don't have all your certificates, then it was unethical for you to go ahead and renew that license without having those hours complete. And if you are caught because of an audit, they will suspend your license, they will fine you, and they will also require you to get the remaining hours before they uh, reinstate your license. It can be fairly costly. Um, they're from what I understand, and I could be wrong about this, but last I heard they were charging, making the fines as charges of what you would pay for an attorney for an hour or two hours. So however long they spent on that, that audit, you're gonna be charged for. And like I said, it can get very expensive. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, NASW National has a tracking service where you can enter your CE certificates. Um, you do not have to be a member, even though we'd like you to be a member. However, what I would like to point out is that this service is not verifying that your CE was approved. It's just a storage bank for you to enter your CE hours if you need help. Um, I just would like to point that out. Yeah, Robin, that's great. And the only other thing I wanted to add to this is limited licensees do not need to earn continuing education. You that's can, right. please, if it's taking you all seven years to get your limited license, please take some continuing education to Could make be. sure you're up to date, but they won't carry over. You can't bank them for your full license. The only thing that are, is required is that human trafficking training and the implicit bias training for the limited license folks. Um, Dwayne, is there a charge for the CE tracker service? Yeah, I think it's like $25. Okay. Um, I do want to go back a minute and talk about implicit bias. Um, and I, I would like to point out that um, a lot of these changes or rules have been put in place based on the public health code for the state of Michigan. Those, those codes are to protect the public. Any individual that might seek help is covered by this public health code. Um, so a lot of these rules are put in because of what was written in the public health code. They then uh, determine which one should be adopted into the general uh, requirements for the different professions. And then that's how the rules become part of the, the law. Um, so please note that right now, um, explicit bias is not, uh, or implicit bias is not required as a CE training. It doesn't have to be approved for a CE hour, but uh, you still have to take an hour of training before you can obtain your license. Are there, is there any confusion about that right now? There's some questions, but I want to make sure we get through the rest of the content. Okay. And we'll, Sorry. we'll get those at the end. Perfect. Okay. So there are several approvals that are recognized for continuing ed in the state of Michigan. A anything approved by ASWB or the ACE program approved continuing ed. NASW, any NASW chapter is a recognized approving body. Um, CSWE is schools of social work and those are, that is the credentialing done for social work education at the university level. 
those are the schools that have master's programs and they are accredited by CSWE or anything approved by another state board of social work. That one gets a little tricky. Um, some state boards have designated other organizations to be their approving body. So it gets a little convoluted in some states. So always uh, double check before you spend your money on a training that might not be accepted in Michigan. Um, you can always reach out to me. My contact information is at the end of this slideshow. Um, let's see, there was one other thing. Oh, and, and then I, I, I want, I want buyer to tell you, buyer beware. I have literally heard from hundreds of social workers who said, said the, the flyer said, CE hours offered just contact your state board. They're not approved. You, it, it's a semantics. It's the, the, the language that they're using. If they're an approved, if it's an approved training, they should have an approval statement and an approval number. All of the states use an approval number and that should be on the flyer or ask them to read it to you. It's very important. Uh, there are people who think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you know, this training through Stanford because it's Stanford and you know, they're charging $1,500 for five days and guess what? They're not really approved. They say, just you know, check with your state board. This is accepted. In the state of Maryland, a lot of people think that means it was approved by the State Board of Maryland. It's not. So just be really careful when you're looking at what is approved for your continuing ed. I'd hate to see you spend all your money um, on something that you cannot use for your renewal. And I'll just say as a CE provider, I welcome these questions. If you have any questions about any of the programs, I think a lot of CE providers are the same. We wanna make sure that you know what you're getting when you reach out and sign up for a course with us. Yes. And of course, all the, the schools of social work in the state of Michigan have their CSWE approvals. So those are all acceptable for continuing it, as well as the NASW trainings. Yeah, and I just want to echo what Rob is saying too, especially in the pandemic. People have been getting lots of brochures and flyers and packets in the mail from various entities saying, read this book and you can get all your CEs. Well, remember, you can only get half through alternative right. learning. So the maximum you could learn through a book like that is 22 and a half anyway. Um, and making sure that it's approved additionally, either through likely through ASWB or NASW. Those two entities or organizations are the largest two uh, providers across the country or accepting bodies across the country. About 35 states accept either ASWB or NASW approvals. There's no one entity that all 50 states accept. Some states have very specific rules about who can get approval. And even weirdly, just last year uh, or in 2020, that was the first time New York got continuing education even as a requirement for their social workers. So some yeah. states are even really far behind uh, in terms of their CE requirements. And that just again is that national landscape of this complex web of licensure and continuing education. Thank you. Thanks Dwayne and Leah. Uh, again, just, just remember to double check. I received a catalog the other day that said Michigan was only requiring one hour of human trafficking to be relicensed. So that was completely uh, erroneous information. So there are other ways to get CEs. Um, let's talk about it. If you're, if you're enrolled in a school of social work program, not a continuing ed necessarily, but a degree program, let's say, you can get 15 CE hours 
for each semester credit you've earned. Um, and you can get 10 CE hours for each quarter credit earned. So keep your transcriptions. Uh, once you complete the program, if you, let's say you're an LBSW and you're in uh, to get your master's degree, you can count those hours for your LBSW renewal. Um, you can also get CEs for doing a presentation. Let's say you get asked to be a, a speaker at a conference on a topic you know well. It's not part of your regular job. You're not necessarily a professor or an adjunct. Um, you can get three CEs for every 60 minutes of presentation. Now to clarify, only the presenter gets that, not the facilitators. Um, and you can only get a maximum of 15 hours that way once every three years. Uh, so if you do, let's say a five hour presentation and you get three CEs for every 60 minutes, that's it for that cycle. You can only count credit for that specific training once. And then you can get credit for publication in a peer reviewed journal or textbook of an article or chapter related to the practice of social work. Um, a maximum of 10 CE hours may be earned for publication in a journal or textbook. Now, I have asked for clarification from Laura about how they make that determination for 10 CE hours. Right now, um, when CE providers apply, to get some, a book approved or a, a presentation, or I say a presentation, we say that 10,000 word, written words are equal to one CE hour. But who's counting? Right? So, um, still waiting for clarification on that. Uh, just a reminder, uh, make sure you keep copies of all your certificates and that all of the required information is on that certificate. Um, and if you have a copy of the promotional materials that list the overview objectives and presenter information, especially if you're the presenter, keep a copy of that as well. And then uh, that is my website, socialworkcec.com. All of the courses that are approved by NASW Michigan, NASW National, uh, that are open to the general social work practice are listed on there. And you can look them up by topic or by number of CEs or type of CEs. And then if you have questions that we didn't answer today, or if anything comes up, this is my email. Hang on to it. Um, it may take a couple of days for me to get back to you, but I do get a lot of emails and I prefer to put the answers up to the questions in writing in an email. So you can keep that, print it out, or save it in a separate file so you can refer back to it. Um, because there are sometimes year after year, I get the same people calling and asking the same questions. And I think it's a good idea if we put it in writing. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So thank you, Robin. So I know we're almost at our time for today. So I do want to use our, our last few minutes. And if folks want to stick around for some additional questions, we'll make sure to, to stick around. Uh, but I did want to get the save the date for our next town hall, which will be September 22nd. We're hoping to do these three or four times a year. Um, some of them may be more specifically focused. We want to have some sessions on you know, best practices for presenters and for hosting workshops. 
If you are looking to get events approved for continuing education, how do you do that in Michigan? And then obviously anytime there are licensure changes or updates, we wanna get those, those answered. Um, if folks do have to pop off, we do ask that you please uh, complete our little short feedback form. I've popped that into the chat box. We'd love to hear what you're hoping to get out of these next sessions as well. Um, but let's take the rest of the time to go through the questions. There's quite a few of them in there, so I'm sorry if I'll miss a few or pop back and forth uh, through a couple of those. And I'm just gonna kind of start from the, the back uh, forward. Um, so let me just pull those up. I, and I did put Robin's contact information also into the chat box. Um, okay, so first question from Michelle, where can you find CEs for macro social work? I just attended one and that's the first one I have found. So that's a great question because macro technically is not a category that's required. However, there are tons of macro content out there. It's just, what's the title, right? Is it grant writing? We just did a business of social work conference. So there were sessions on branding and marketing, uh, you know, uh, doing financial social work. So there's a lot of political social work. You know, there's lots of different sessions depending on what sort of macro or clinical topics you wanna have. Just note that those would count towards your general credits, um, unless there also is ethics tied to into it as well, which there absolutely could be. But since Michigan doesn't require macro CEs, they're usually not listed as such there. Um, okay. Uh, Dwayne, James Bellini has a question about when uh, he can start accruing CE hours. Yep. So James, once you renew your license on the 30th, you have to wait till the first of the month following that renewal. So for example, it would be May 1st that you can start earning CEs. Yeah, and similar question from Lisa. If my first renewal cycle ends the 30th of uh, April of 2023, when do my CE requirements or when can I start earning? So it'd be May 1st of 2020 if you end uh, April 30th of 2023. Great. Uh, Cheryl Berry wants to know about implicit bias. Yes, Cheryl, it will be one hour each year of your three-year cycle. Yeah, and to note about that, you don't have to do one every year. You could do a three-hour session, and that would cover all three years. How the implicit bias rules were written at the state level is it's one hour per licensure cycle. So some health licenses are only on a two year license cycle, we're on a three year. So for those folks, they just have to do two, we have to do three, uh, but it all equals out in the end. Um, okay, question from Alexandria. What if I already have my license without having to have the human trafficking and implicit bias training before your first cycle started in 2021? Okay, so if you already have your license, in theory, if it's in the last couple of years, you should have already had human trafficking. That's been the requirement since 2017, is that all folks have a human trafficking training requirement complete. Um, however, uh, going forward, you'll just need to make sure that those are now, that at least the human trafficking will be two hours of continuing education, and that implicit bias will be three hours of training in that cycle. Um, Similarly from Kevin, if we are students who have taken courses on human trafficking or implicit bias, can those count uh, towards the training for your LLMSW? So yes, our hope is that most of the schools of social work are providing or offering both human trafficking and implicit bias to their students before they graduate. So when they get ready to fill out that checkbox on the application, it will be done. Aliyah, I know that U of M has courses. And one of the things is we also get asked, where can I find human trafficking or implicit bias if I need that now. U of M has a, a course that folks can go online. I know Wayne does as well. Some of the schools of social work will. And we're hoping to have a webinar also sometime in the spring or summer. Um, but go to the collaborative website, Robin's website, because you can search specifically by ethics or human trafficking or implicit bias, and we'll show you all the approved courses that are available uh, in the state. Um, okay, question from Desiree. How do I sign my name on my documents? I am an LMSW clinical and macro. That's how you do it. LMSW hyphen clinical and macro. That should be your signature line um, on, on all your stuff. Uh, Nicole, this question uh, could be for Robin, just to reiterate, how long should folks maintain their, their records? 
for six years now. At one point it was seven, then it went to five, and now it's back at six. Great. Um, this is also an interesting question from Cinnamon. Is there a time frame after your renewal that you could be expected to be notified if you are chosen to be audited? Or could it be any time in the three years before your next cycle? You know, I, I, I've I never been told when they specifically like to do that. I would expect it at any time. Um, perhaps someone raised a question about your your practice or your CE hours. They may audit you at that time. So just always be prepared. And I, I would guess that likely it's Laura is auditing people who have just renewed that year primarily. And so um, it, they may, you may be randomly pulled in, but I think for the most part, it's people who are at that year, they just completed their renewal process. Um, uh, Jenna asked, do we need to show evidence that we attended the implicit bias training? So this is a good question also. Um, it, only if you're audited will you have to show any of this stuff as it relates to your continuing education or training requirements. So you need to have that paper trail of all of your stuff. And I know some social workers keep Google Docs where they'll track the date, the time, which sort of credit. That's a really good way to do it. You know, you can use the NASW tracking service. That'll also help keep everything in one place for you. Um, and just making sure that you're going through an approved body for any of those two is that's really um, important to know. Um, mm, Cynthia, can you clarify the term training? Does training equal continuing education? No, it does not. So training is a separate bucket. Uh, Aliyah, do you, I know you talked about that. Do you just want to give a quick clarification on that again? Sure. Um, the trainings are things, I, I've been using the expression with folks to check the box. So it's not, uh, you know, requirements that you have to have approved CE hours for. Um, the public health code is requiring social workers and other professionals to have these implicit bias trainings um, and human trafficking. Human trafficking was check the box as a training, it's moving over to become CE hours now. So you'll need to get that as approved continuing education hours. Um, I'm not sure if that clarified or not, but there's that's the difference is like trainings may or may not have CE approval attached to them. Yes. CE hours will specifically say they are CE hours uh, in some way. You'll get a certificate documenting those hours. Yeah, and as Robin mentioned, when something gets added to the public health code as this broad scope across every health profession, it's then up to each field to determine if they want to then add it in as continuing education. Like we did for human trafficking, it was first this generic training requirement. And through conversations with social workers across the state and our own work as an association, we were like, that doesn't make sense to just be this frou-frou one time ever training, you know, it needs to be something with some more teeth on it. And so I would guess that probably in the future, implicit bias may also be one of those things that become a CE requirement. But yes. as of now, it's just that training piece. I'm hoping yeah. to see implicit bias become a required training. Yeah, great. Um, okay, other question from Alexandria. So we never hand in CE hours to Lara or NASW. Correct. Unless you're audited. Unless audited. Yeah. Yes. So it's, you're just ethically checking that box that I have completed these trainings. Um, other clarification, is LMSW hyphen C okay for your signature? No, <laughs> you should have it written out. I know it's a lot of letters, um, but it, technically in the state law, it should be spelled out. Um, now, if sometime that, if that changes in the future, maybe it will, but as of now, it should either list clinical or macro spelled out. Um, okay, so question. I, oh, I received a question that was a direct message to me. Um, can a CE count for more than one category? So like one training that counts for ethics and pain management? Yes. And at least in my office, we'll designate how many hours we think are which <laughs> for the training. I'm not sure every provider does that, but um, that's yeah. what you can at least expect as a practice from U of M. Yeah, they can't, the provider cannot count it as a, a CE unless it's at least one hour. So if they're giving you a training on ethics and pain management, 
each topic has to have at least one hour devoted to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can't double dip. It can't be just one CE that's Correct. ethics and pain. But if Correct. it was two hours, one could be one and one could be the other. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Good so when I, when I review the applications, I look to see what what the timed agenda says about those topics. Um, question from Rita, how do I get classes to be super, a supervisor and what is needed to be a master supervisor? That's a really good question, Rita. So in Michigan, if you want to be a supervisor for an LLMSW or LLBSW, all you technically have to be as of today is fully licensed. There's not a training requirement However, with a giant asterisk next to the however, it, per our ethics, you should be competent to practice in whatever you're doing in social work. So if you are a social work supervisor, you should have competence in supervision. So you should have some training, some skills, some background in supervision. NASW, we offer a core supervision certificate a couple of times a year. Those are on our website if you want to check one of those out. There are other supervision trainings that are available but technically, as a state, all you have to be is licensed to be offering supervision. Um, for folks. Yeah, they do recommend that you practiced fully licensed for three years. And so does NASW. Um, however, we have seen people go out, hang up a shingle and, you know, say I'm available and they haven't practiced very long at all. Um, that's just a uh, a legal problem waiting to happen. Yeah. So uh, vicarious liability is a thing. There's a question um, about the timing of the implicit bias training. If your renewal is due for 4-30-2022, do you need the implicit bias training in order to renew or does the implicit bias training need to occur in the upcoming cycle? So the implicit bias rule takes effect June 1st of this year, of 2022. So if you're renewing before that deadline, you do not need any of the new implicit bias stuff. If you're renewing after that, you will be in that new rules. So nothing, any rule change will not happen mid-cycle of anything that you're in. It will always take effect whenever your first full cycle that is next is. All right. And we will have this recording available and we'll send out all the information to folks. I know this was a lot of stuff. So there may be some um, uh, specific questions around your particular area of practice. Um, so I, I did see one other question that came through. Okay, I'm a, a macro designated LLMSW, but we're clinical now. Is that okay? My supervisor is macro who is supervising, but I work as an independent therapist too. So this is a good question. If you start out and get your macro LL, because you'll choose that on your licensure paperwork, and you end up switching into a clinical field, no, you can't be doing two things at the same time. You have to complete one set of hours first. Or, there, you know, sometimes if you're in a clinical job, there's also macro components. So you may finish out your hours in macro and then add the clinical designation on afterward. If you want, if you're going completely in the opposite direction, you can contact Laura and they can switch your designation. So if you've gone six months into a macro limited license and know you're going to be switching into a completely clinical job, you can have them switch, but your hours in theory would start somewhat fresh. So you just want to be very careful about what the work is that you're doing and you want to call Laura and um, get clarification from them about what your scope of practice is. Is the work that you're doing in your new position still going to count towards the license you currently have been working towards? Because you definitely do not want to find yourself in a space where you are not able to collect your hours at the end of the day, because you only get six renewals of your limited license. Once those six renewals are complete, are done, and if you haven't finished your work, your supervision, or your test, you're no longer able to get licensed, at least as of now, in Michigan at that level. So you don't want to continue to renew if you're not collecting hours. Um, one of the benefits of this new MyPlus system is it will give you a countdown every time you renew of which number license renewal you're on. 
and there will be some sort of red alert when you're on your last one that will say, are you sure this is the last one you have? Uh, so be careful with that. Um, and I wanna point out, Dwayne, that if you are being supervised by an LMSW designated macro, that has to be what you're practicing. You cannot be supervised by a macro social worker um, if you're doing clinical work. And there is a new form, fairly new form on the licensure uh, packet at the LARA website where your supervisor has to attest to what their license is and whether or not they are uh, have the right credentials to do your supervision. All right, and maybe our final question from Cynthia. So how do you find a training that's not CEs if we have these new training requirements? It's a good question. And I don't know if Aliyah, if you want to take that, I see it. Yeah, I can I can mention that there's um and I want to I'll, I'll share with everybody our school of public health has put out a very good human trafficking training if anybody still needs to do their check the box. It's free it doesn't offer CE hours, though, so um, anything you're seeing there if you are somebody who's going to need to get human trafficking CE hours in the future, you won't be able to use this training for that purpose. But if you're renewing this April and you need to do human trafficking it's a good one um, it's free it's available. Um, so they're just kind of out there. I'm not sure like, what the best strategy is for that. Um, CE providers like myself are often aware of them because we get asked if they um, include CE hours. And I've been telling people they do not, um, but it's a good training and it, it certainly checks the box for you if you need to do that for licensure or for uh, your renewal this year. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing I would add to that is for, for organizations who may be wanting to do implicit bias, and not have continuing ed approval. It costs organizations to get CE approval. Yes. So this may be a way for some organizations to offer a training for folks that they don't have to pay an additional cost to get an approval from a state or national body. Right, and I would say too, if you're looking, um, the, per the group that's providing the training should demonstrate that they're aware of what the public health code is requiring. There's specific things that you need for these trainings. One thing, for example, for implicit bias is that at least a portion of the training needs to be conducted synchronously or live or in person. It, it can't be just all a recorded thing. So if somebody's telling you that you like that their um, training meets these implicit bias requirements, but it's all a recorded session and none of it is live, they probably haven't fully read the requirements um, for those. Um, so just make sure that they're aware of, <laughs> um, of what the public health code says about those yeah. training requirements. Um, for ours, for example, we list the part of the administrative code where those are described um, yeah. for our trainings. Great. Well, I appreciate this is our first one of these. So I, I feel like we got a lot of good questions answered and, and hopefully asked it, it, it today. I appreciate everyone's time. Please feel free to reach out to Robin, Aaliyah, or myself. Again, Aaliyah is the Director of Continuing Education at the University of Michigan School of Social Work. Robin is the Manager of the Continuing Education Collaborative, and I'm the Executive Director for NASW Michigan. Um, so again, I'll just uh, one last time drop the, the feedback uh, link into the chat box. We ask, please give us some, some tips for our next one of these sessions. If you have uh, future uh, other questions that you, we didn't get to answer today, we want to make sure that those get covered. And we'll be sending out all the resources that were shared today um, in an email sometime later this week. So be on the lookout for that. But thank you all. I hope you have a good rest of your week and happy last two days of Social Work Month. Uh, the time is right for Social Work. Thanks, everyone.